All right, everyone. I'm back with some more geometric properties and things that you can calculate about a cross section that's given to you so that you can proceed in all kinds of statics and mechanics problems. But, you know, we're going to tackle something that I get a lot of questions on with respect to like the centroid and especially the moment of inertia using, you know, the centroid one you're probably familiar with. And then the moment of inertia, it's always like, oh, man, I got to use the parallel axis theorem, which is this thing right here. And you probably know, fundamentally speaking, the moment of inertia, you can call, consider that the resistance to rotation, okay? So resistance to rotation, and then combined with E times I, that's called the flexural rigidity for beams, okay? So it, it really helps prevent, you know, the larger your I, the less deflection that you're going to have in a beam, okay, practically speaking. But this I here is also called, this I, this is the parallel axis theorem, which is some derivation of it, but here... I, you may have seen like IX is equal to Y squared DA, okay? And if you recall maybe from before, Y bar right here times, you know, A was equal to some Y times DA right here. This, the centroid was called the first moment of area, okay? Because of this area times an arm. This moment of inertia is called the second moment of area because of this y squared if you will if you're like it's like you're taking two moments or something like that okay but anyways this it's technically called the second moment of area so that sometimes it's it's used that way and just something you want to be familiar with but i'm going to show you how to calculate the centroid of this t-shape i also showed the t-shape uh, center calculation in another video but here i'm going to show it to you in a nice little clean way choose a datum or reference bake uh, you know, that's the first thing that we're, we're always going to do in order to find a distance. We need a reference, okay, or an origin. Uh, two, we're going to break up the cross-section into manageable areas, all right? So when I say a manageable area, you know, I'm talking about, like, shapes where we already know the moments of inertia for, all right? So in this case, it'd be a bunch of rectangles. But, you know, things that we're familiar with that we can look in, like, the back of a book or an inside cover book and get a table on, all right? That's what we want to do. And then we want to calculate the central moment of inertia of a section. I'm going to do it using a table. Uh, you know, I, I really, I, I like to tell people, use a table just because it's just technique, right? Until you get good at it, then you can get off the table, right? But but for now, just do the table. That way you just know what you're doing until until you feel really good about what you're doing. Then you can you know, move away from the table and things, okay? But here, so let's let's do this right here, okay? So I obviously we know that the centroid or the, the horse, you know, the centroid of the X uh, or the Y axis right here, we know that you know, the centroid of this section lies along this line, okay, because of the symmetry. And in and, and the centroid, the vert, you know, here probably is somewhere, those Y bars somewhere around here that, that we need to locate. All right, so in order to do that, we know that we're going to apply this basic equation here for the first moment of area or the centroid. And I, what I want to do is create a table, okay? So let me create a table here. So let me get my straight edge. I'm a big straight edge fan. Got to use the straight edges right here. Okay, and here uh, I'm going to create a table. So I have here, bam, right here. I'll call this column the number column. So for every element that I'm going to uh, have in my cross section, that will be it's, essentially it's my index i here. This this is my index or my counter. Uh, I'm going to have one column here because I'm going to be using this. I'll have a i right here, the area of that that element that I break it up into the distance from the datum okay the distance from the datum so in this case so i better define a datum here so for this problem i'm going to choose you know it's usually a good idea to choose an edge i'm going to choose this edge as my reference for this y bar calculation that i'm going to do okay so this is going to be my reference or my datum okay that'll be where i define all these distances y i and then i i know that in my calculation here i'm going to need another column that does a i times y i okay so i'll have that here and then i'm gonna have uh let's see here i'm gonna have some and then so let's start let's leave it at that for now okay so i'm gonna move down here a little bit i don't know if you can see everything but here i'm gonna break this up into a manageable area so i have this reference calculation that i want to make uh let's see here so I, let me break this up into a manageable area i want to break this up into two rectangles so that's a popular choice i'm gonna take Maybe make this cut right here. Not a cut, but, you know, I'm just going to break it up into one here. This one first area here. And then using a different color, maybe this one here will be my second area here. Okay. And so I'll, I'll need to add some rows. 
to this. I have two areas, so I'm going to have a row and another row. Doesn't everything look better with a straight edge, you know? It's like, dang, man. All right, so here I've got, let's make this happen. I got one, I got two, so I broke them two. And so if you had three elements or four elements or whatever, right, in your cross section, then you just keep breaking it up that way. The area of the first one is 12 times two. So 12 times two inches, and that's just 24 inches squared. That's a no-brainer. And then area two is 10 times one, 10 times one inch, and that's just 10 inches squared. That's good. And then now I want, let's see here, I have the centroid of this one, of one, and the centroid of area two is, is right about here. And I know that this distance from here to here, this centroid is five inches. And the distance from this centroid right here is one inch. And so the distance y1, if you will, y1 is the distance from the reference to the centroid of area one. This would be y1. This is equal to one inch, one inch. And the distance of this location from the reference right here, this is five plus two more inches. So that's seven inches. So I know right away, hey, this is one inch, this is seven inches. And then I, I run through the calculation, 24 times one, 24 inches cubed, and then 10 times seven, 70 inches cubed. And now I have a nice little table. That's this, uh, this little rectangle section for later. But here, I have this table here. I know that I have this y bar is equal to the sum of ai times yi divided by the sum of ai right here. And here, if I make this last part the sums, I just know I need the sum of this column, which is 10 plus 24, 34 inches squared. And then sum of this column right here, which is the sum of AIYI, which is 94 inches cubed. And so 94 inches cubed divided by 34 inches squared tells me that Y bar from my datum is 2.765 inches. Okay, 2.765 inches. So that tells me that this location right here this is 2.765 inches, okay? And that's y bar from my reference or my datum. Now, now that I have my centroid defined, I can go and proceed to my moment of inertia calculations. And now I need columns for the parallel axis theorem, okay? So here I've got the moment of inertia of an element about itself, okay? Or I about itself, or area I, the moment of inertia about itself. And then I already have a column for A. Look, all I'm doing is going in and filling in the parallel axis theorem, making columns for that. So I already have a column for A, or the areas, the elements. Now I just need a column for DYI, okay? DYI is the difference between the centroid of the element minus the centroid of the entire cross-section, okay? So here, so each one is just YI minus Y bar. So that's, that's pretty good. And, and just to show you what it looks like graphically, this distance right here is dy1. And this distance right here from, again, the center right here, this is going to be dy2. Okay? That's what, it, that's what it means. Okay? Like, you know, just looking at it. And then ix bar is just the moment of inertia about itself. And I broke this up into manageable areas. And here I've got this rectangular shape. I know the moment of inertia of a rectangular shape. It's one that you should probably memorize. You know, no one's asking you to derive it. Just memorize it. And it's a rectangle, or you can find it in the back of a book or anything, you know, right? And so here, you know, it just moment of inertia of a rectangular shape. So here, this is just kind of something you would see at the back of a book. And I know it's 112 base times height cubed. All right. So for area one, or for region one right here, I have 112 base of area one is 12 inches times the height of of uh, um, of that first area, which is two inches cubed. That's going to tell me this 12 inch cancel. This is going to be eight inches to the fourth. Make sure you check your units. A lot of times people mess up their units here and you end up with inches cubed or something. All right, just make sure it's inches to the fourth right here. And then for the for the area two right here, the, I have 112. The base of area two is one inch times the height of it, which is going to be 10 inches cubed. And here, 1,000 divided by 12 is 83.333 inches to the fourth, okay? Inches to the fourth. 
And then now I just go through and I take y bar, yi minus y bar. So here, this is going to be 1 inch minus uh, 2.765 inches, I believe. So that's going to be minus 1.765 inches. And then here, yi minus y bar again, 7 minus 2.77 minus 2.765 inches. 2.765, that looks funny. 2.765 inches right there. And that's going to give me... 4.235 inches okay and it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive or how you if you know i could have flipped this and made it y by minus y i you know y bar minus y i and the reason it doesn't matter is because i got this dy squared okay so the last column really is just this this uh a times dy i squared that's going to be my last column that i need here okay and if i run through the numbers here you know i'm going to get here 74.765 Notice the units, inches to the fourth, okay? And then a lot of times people use inches cubed here, get that messed up. 179.352 inches to the fourth if I run that, okay? And now to apply the parallel axis theorem, I, I look at this equation over here. I just realized it's the sum of the i's about itself and the sum of a dy squareds, which are column here and here, okay? So this, if I sum up 83 plus 0.333 plus 8, this is... 91.333 inches to the fourth. I sum up this column over here. This is 254.117 inches to the fourth. And then now I apply my parallel axis theorem. I, I, the moment of inertia about the horizontal of this cross section is equal to the sum of ix bar plus the sum of a dy squared, which is 91.333 inches to the fourth plus 254.117 inches to the fourth, right? And here, this is going to be, if I add this up, Ix is equal to 345.45 inches to the fourth, and bam, okay? So this is how I calculate the centroid and I, or the moment of inertia. Again, look, use the table. I know it's tedious. Or it looks, seems tedious at first or whatever, if you're good at it, okay? But just use a table. Don't make mistakes until you get better at it. Then you move away from the table. You know, I show you technique. You got your own style. All right, take it easy.